This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at La Pacho Farm. But before that, this video is brought to you by all of the Farm Kings and all of the Farm Barons. Thank you for being members of the channel. So approximately two weeks ago, I completely messed up the credit update and as a result, lost track of who I have and haven't given thanks out to. So for the rest of the month, we are going to be giving shout outs to everyone that has participated with the channel in the form of a annual or monthly subscription as a result of being members. If you want to learn more about that, click the join button down below the video and read about the various channel membership levels. Now, Lapacha Farm can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. This map is based on the Estancia Lapacha map, which was the Farm Sim 17 Platinum expansion map. This is what brought us sugarcane into the game, as well as all of the sugarcane handling equipment. And with that, let's go ahead and read the description. The well-known Estancia La Pacha map completely rebuilt, keeping with the same layout and with a different style. Introduced in the Platinum Editions of Farm Sim 17, as I said, you can now play this map featuring over 30 fields in Farm Sim 22. What is included? This map includes a city, train, production chains, BGA, big forest, collectibles, vehicle shop, 60 viable areas, 35 fields, and all standard base game functions. We are going to use the mods that we typically use when we take a look at these maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. Now, if you happen to load this map up in the farm manager or start from scratch, you will notice that the starting farm is halfway empty. So everything that you cannot sell is basically at the farm, which includes two sheds and a lot of decorative stuff and fencing. If you play this map in new farmer mode, you will see what we are going to experience here at the start. Also, if you happen to play with precision farming, this map uses the French soil map. So that is important to know. And here we are. We start out right down here at the shop. And anyone familiar with Estancia La Pacho will know exactly where we are because this map is very, very well in keeping with respect to how the base map looked in FS-17's Platinum Expansion. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And we'll scroll out and I think people will really recognize this PDA for what it is. We do have all of the standard crop types available to us here in Farm Sim 22, including grapes and olives. If we take a look at the lands area, you see we start off by owning the main farm here, which is 21 and a half acres in size, $435,000. We also own field 35 as well as field one. We do have a biogas plant, which can be purchased right here for $359,000. And if we continue to look at our viable farm lands by looking at the farm land lease screen, you will see all the farm lands that we own at the start, as well as how big they are. If they own, if they contain any fields and then what the costs are going to be for that. Let's go ahead and slowly scroll through this list so you can take a look at all of the other viable farm lands, how big the farm land is, if the farm land happens to include, include any fields, and then, of course, what the price of that viable farm land might be. And then in keeping with that, we'll take a look at our field calculator screen. The field calculator screen is great because it shows us the actual size of the field. Now you will have to cross reference the field number with the field or the farmland lease screen in order to then understand which plot of viable farm land is associated with the particular field that you are interested in, and then also how much that is going to cost you. Now, we do have the standard Northern Hemisphere crop counter available in the game. I was kind of hoping to see a Southern Hemispherical crop counter because Estancia Lapacho was, of course, a South American map. And then Lapacho Farm 
the kind of hulp continues that thought process in being a South American farm. But with this North American crop calendar, I think some people are going to be a little bit disappointed in that. If we take a look at our prices screen, you can see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game products that we can grow on this particular map, including sugar beet cut. We also have the ability to sell all of our animal outputs, silage, hay straw, and grass. And then as we move down to our productions, you will see that we do indeed have, for the most part, multiple production buy points for all of the base game production items that are available to put down in Farm Sim 22. We also have multiple buy points for bulk lime, and we do have a stone crusher. Take a look at our starting equipment. We have a decent list of starting equipment, especially given the fact that we only own two fields at the start. Now, in Farm Manager or Start from Scratch, you do not own any farm machinery at the start. We do have some cows here in New Farmer Mode. We own 60 cows, 20 Brown Swiss, and 40 Holstein. They have been filled up with TMR straw, and they are basically ripe and ready to start producing milk right out of the gate. We do have contracts available on the map, and we do not start with any production. We have 20 French collectibles, so we do have the game cartridges available on the map to collect. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our precision farming soil map. As I said, this map includes the French soil map, so you can see how that gets applied to all of the various farmlands. We have a built of silty clay and loam to the north. We have a little section of sandy loam and loamy sand more toward the middle of the map. Then down to the south, once again, we have more silty clay and loam as opposed to anything else. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting equipment. Start out with the Case Maxim CVX-145. The Massey Ferguson 6718S. We then have a Maximum, or the Magnum 400 Power Drive Tractor. We have the MAN TGS 18.500 4x4 Semi. We have the Case Axle Flow 7150 Harvester. That is paired up with the 3050 Terraflex 28 foot Green Header, as well as the 8 row 4408 Case IH Corn Header. We do also have the Nardi N 6035 Header Trailer. We have the 2017 pickup truck as well as the SKS301050 Crampy Semi Trailer. We have the Scorpio 550 Stone Picker. We have the Lemkin Titan 18 Plow, the Re Rebel, the Rebel Classic 600T Disc Harrow. We have the Lemkin Solitar 12 Cedar, the Hardy Mega 1200L Sprayer. We do have the Breedall K105 Lime and Solid Fertilizer Spreader as well as the Amazon ZATS3200 Fertilized Spreader. We have the ELO Do It 7300 Mower. We also have the Pottinger Faro 4010D Forage Wagon, the Kuhn VB3190 Round Baler. We have the MKS3200 Liquid Trailer, and that is going to hold our milk, water, liquid fertilizer, and herbicide. We have the Wilson Silver Star Animal Transport Trailer, front loader arms, then we have a pallet fork, universal bucket, and bell spike for that front loader, and then a pair of front weights. I'm going to go ahead and have over to our pickup truck. We are here at the main farm. We have the French farmhouse here, so when we do collect our collectibles, they will appear located right there. We have our wardrobe trigger. We have our sleep trigger here at the front door. And as far as what items can be sold, well, everything that is 100% base Farm Sim 22, like this farmhouse, can be sold. You can also sell the weather station here as well as the dog house. What we cannot sell is basically everything in the backyard. Everything that you see here in the backyard is permanently affixed to the map. The fences are permanently affixed to the map, as is the gate. Now, while this starts out being a base game Horman shed, it has this brickwork applied to it. 
And as a result, this building is not sellable. And in fact, this building is going to be present in all play modes. We have some of our equipment. And then the other building that is going to be visible in all play modes is our airplane hangar, which is located right here. And it's pretty cool that we've got the airplane. And then we have this little short runway. It is a really cool little detail that the map author has put in. We have a fuel trailer right here beside our hangar. It has 15,000 liters of fuel. So this building is also permanently affixed to the map. We have some additional machinery over here to the side. We have some herbicide pallets as well as some liquid fertilizer pallets. You see our farm silo is over here. This is a standard base game farm sim silo. So we have our dump station and we have our fill pipe located right there. Through the woods, we have our cow area. So this is again, standard farm sim 22 fare. So we have our cows, we have our milk trigger, our animal buy trigger. We have our silage bunker for our cows. We have our slurry point, and then our food trough is inside. Our manure pit. This building can be completely sold. It is a standard FS22 building, so it can be completely sold. We don't have to worry about keeping this one around. So with respect to can the farm be customized, the farm can partially be customized. It is not completely and 100% totally customizable, but we can remove this building, we can remove the silo, we can remove the farmhouse, all of the decorative bits, including the fence, is going to remain in all play modes. So that, I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for the fly around. We'll fly around a map and take a look at the highlights. Then we'll come back to the shop, get in our Mahindra, and then do a real drive around taking a look at all of the cell points and production areas. As we gain a little bit of altitude, let's go ahead and pull up the big PDA. And I'll go ahead and talk to you about what kind of production is built into the map. The map includes 13 production areas. So we have our main farm right here. We have our lane going out to the main road. The map includes a biogas plant, a sawmill, a spinnery, then we have a grain mill, a bakery, two different dairies, a carpentry, a grape processing unit, tailor, cereal mill, oil mill, sugar mill. So we have our fuel station below. We have our animal dealer located right here, as well as our bale cell point. One of the many silo transfer stations can be found right behind the animal dealer and this is going to be where we can dump and store grain we can also then put grain onto the train in order to sell at the off train sell point oh sorry i misspoke this cell point is not off the map this cell point is to the northwest corner in keeping with the same location where the original Estancia La Pacha map had its BGA. Here we have our La Pacha Farm BGA. And then we are going to kind of fly up the track to our train cell point. And if I were to give you any sort of hints, I would say that someplace up here in the woods, 
that might be a good place to go camping. Might also be a good place to uh, find a lost or stolen game cartridge. So here, here we have our train only cell point. Even though we have what looks like a road leading up to this area, this is intended really for the train and only the train. Let's go ahead and take a look across the map. Overall, most of the map is fairly flat. Here comes the train right now. Then the main farm is directly in front of us, off in the distance. We have our sawmill located right below. It is also configured with a log cell point. We have our sugar mill below. It is using a base game sugar mill but i like how it's added the additional building to the side in order to completely change its looks also in keeping with the original map we have some cars that have fallen off the bridge and have basically been left in the river over here we have the spinnery In the original map, this was that was area was kind of a mission. Now over here we have the bakery. We have our grape processing unit. We have our another train silo. Here we have our garage. It's really interesting to see assets pulled from several different maps here on La Pacha Farm. So here we have the kind of the castle or the, the ruins on um, Holt Bay the Rune. We also have Holt Bay the Rune buildings as well as Erlengrot buildings down here in the town. And we have some really close quarters here in what I kind of call the old district. So a cell point located below. We know a cell point located right here. Then we have a cell point located there. And then we have the tailor located right there. And it's going to be rather interesting getting into this tailor based on how those um, brick walls are set up. We have our town square. We have a cell point there at the grocery. another fuel trigger and we have one of our dairies or actually both of our dairies are located right here on the corner cereal factory was back there the cell point over here to the left at the docks Our oil mill is located right there. 
as we turn back a little bit, we have yet another grain transfer silo located right here. And then we have a carpentry shop. And on top of having 13 production items built in, we even have a decent sized viable plot here to put down additional production. So with respect to having production built into the map, the map is clearly going to get a full point in regard to that. We're going to get the map a full point with respect to including all the sell points for base game products, animal outputs, and crops. We're going to give the map a half a point with respect to can the farm be customizable. We do have the ability to get rid of the animal area, the silage bunker, the manure heap, one of the sheds, and the farmhouse. But the rest of the items around the farm are not sellable in any way. That includes two buildings, and then all of the fences, gates, and then the decorative bits there behind the... Um, the main farm and around the farmhouse. So we have our stone crusher cell point located right there with a biogas plant, our biomass plant. Then we have kind of a farmer's market cell point. And now we are going to make our way back to the shop because that is basically going to conclude our aerial tour of the map. So once again, we are back here at the shop. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. Now I can see where our new vehicles spawn in at. So we have a decent sized area for our vehicles to spawn in. We also have a decent area for our vehicles to exit. So we shouldn't have any issue with buying extremely large machinery and getting it out of the shop as far as other shop triggers well, I am looking and it looks like inside of maybe this door We do have our customized cell repair and trade trigger located, I guess, behind the service desk. It's pretty cool. Got it set up here as if it's a little bit of showroom. We got some viable smalls lined up. Some dudes far harvesters. We have a Plus, or sorry, a crone forage wagon here in the back. So we've got some machinery set up for demonstration purposes. Now, if we head to the right, this will take us right back to the main farm. We are going to go ahead and make our way to the left. And we're gonna make our way around to the town. I think the map author did a really fine job bringing this map forward to FS22. Lots of details, lots of elements. To like about this map like I said we've got the decorative bits of bringing forward the wrecked cars down in the river we have billboards scattered around plenty of production has been brought into the map with pretty good pretty good taste with respect to um, modifying the map so here we have one of our dairies I believe I misspoke earlier saying that there were two dairies on the corner. One of our dairies is right here. So this is from Hulk Better Rune. So we have our interactive icon. Our 
dump station and then our pallet spawn point around the back. And then around the corner, we're going to find our restaurant cell point. And that's going to be a little fun to get into because we're going to have to go down this alleyway and then dump around back. I know we're going the wrong way down a one-way street, but hey, what are you going to do about it? I guess watch me turn around because I realized I really need to go this way in order to reach both of the areas that I want to get to. So we've got another restaurant cell point located right here. And then if we just kind of sneak right here between the walls, we have our... Taylor that is the base game Taylor, so nothing really to see here. Now we've got a very interesting adaptation of several buildings into what is supposed to be set up as kind of a grocery store on the ground level and then kind of a house and apartment buildings or apartments possibly above the uh, the grocery and then we have a dump station here around the back We have a cell point here at the diner. And we have a vehicle workshop. Also. We have our second dairy located right here. So we have our interactive icon. We have to sneak into here. Small equipment is going to be needed for sure in bringing things around to the production areas here in town at least. So we have our dump station in Pallet Spawn Point. I like how this has all been set up with milk trucks and such here around back. Then we have a bakery located right here. This is from Holt Bay of the Rune. Going around, we have our dump station, interactive icon, and pallet spawn point. We have a second fuel station. Then, like I said, we have this really large area for buying and putting placeables down. We wish to expand in the original map this was a soccer field or for the rest of the world a football field so we have our carpentry production to the left we have bulk lime the right we have a train transfer silo so we are our fill pipe our dump station to get into the train silo and then of course at the tracks we have our dump and fill pipes to put things on and off the train
now things are be a little bit more spread out as we get out of town. We have our cereal factory located right here. station or out spawn point you definitely want to be bringing kind of smaller stuff in to a lot of these production points a large semi flatbed is probably not the best choice of machinery And down here at the port, we have a cell point. Now I think I'm going to skip the fuel station that is just past the main farm. I don't think we need to necessarily double back to that. What I do want to do is come this way. Whoa! I was not expecting AI traffic on this road. So here we have the biofuel plant for wood chips and logs. We have our log cell trigger there around the side. What a busy back road too. Here we have our farmer's market cell point for our grain and pallets. This is originally from the Holt Bay of the Rune map. We also have bulk mine purchase here. Across the street, then we then have our stone crusher. I think this is a really great way of setting this up. We've seen this kind of details on a few other maps. So we have a stone crusher. We can come and dump into the top, or if we wanted to, we could come around the side there and come down in here and then dump on the ground. Although, pretty sure you get more money if you dump in the top. So you might as well just take the easier way out and dump at the top, right? the train just gonna see looks like the AI went through it I wanted to see if I could go through it we have our oil mill Base game oil mill, we have our dump station, pallet point, and then our interactive trigger there around the back. Let's go ahead and look, take a look how this map looks from the end cab perspective, kind of a ground level. And one thing that seems to have changed is that the Stancha Lapacha map had more red 
textured or red colored dirt whereas Lapacho has a more traditional I guess brown colored dirt to it so over here we have our animal dealer it's a really great murals and kind of billboards and such scattered around we have our bale cell point and we have our animal trigger located right here now with respect to buildings using the base the new fs22 texturing system overall the map all the buildings are using the new texture system except for this building right here this is kind of the concrete structure from fs15's soft noska and it's kind of showing its age but really it's, this is the only structure that I could really find that was not using the new texturing techniques. So I felt a little, a little off for maybe taking points off for just one structure. So we are going to give the map a full point with respect to that. Let's go ahead and take a look at our ground textures also. So we have the collection of pretty much all of the FS-22 ground textures here, including cobblestone from Holt by the Rune. We have our standard buildings. No custom production, cell points, greenhouses or orchards. Let's go up and check out the biogas plant. Hey, you're going to see the train an awful lot on this map. So we have two scales, one on both entry points. We have our digester. Now, of course, when we buy this plot of land, we will have the trigger spawn up. We have our input for slurry. We have our output for digestate. We have a decent shed there to store any PGA equipment. And a single large three-sided silage bunker. Now, if we went back out back way and it is going to loop us around so I like when we can get scaled on the input and outputs makes it feel a bit more realistic to me now I'm just going to get across the back of the farm here There we can see the main farm. We can see our silo. Here is the fencing I mentioned that is permanent. Up off the, in the distance in the hills, we have the train cell point. As I've already said, the map holder has done a really fine job with bringing this map forward, putting a lot of elements into the map that are FS-22 specific, and still adding lots of decorations, really giving it a kind of a life of its own. You know the base map that th this came from, the field layout, the road layout is all there. It's just, it's been updated with FS-22 textures. It's been updated with FS-22 buildings. 
And then, of course, FS22 gameplay with the addition of those 13 productions. Miller Sawmill. We've got a log cell point here. Bike production, we have a rent train icon. We have our wood chip point, we have our log cell point or interactive icon. To sell the logs, our pallet spawn point, and our production interactive trigger there around the side. Sugar mill. And the sugar mill itself is standard FS22 base game sugar mill, but like I said, I like how he's added this building off to the side to give it kind of some loading docks, some additional loading bays. Really does make this building to stand out and be unique while at the same time using all FS-22 assets. Let's make your way across the river. Be very, very careful on this bridge. We don't want to wind up down into the river like everybody else. Spinnery, so we have our dump station, our interactive icon, our pallet spawn point. This is what happens when you look at the PDA while you're trying to drive. You run into stuff. A few more things of note. Looks like we're gonna have to double back once we get on the other side of the river. So just bear with me for a brief moment. A couple of small fields on this side of the river. Oh, I was just kind of thinking to myself with these small fields, 18 and 20 on this side of the river could in theory have maybe been better purposed as uh, as viable build space spaces that you can buy and put down additional production buildings just given the size of the fields there and the distance that they are from pretty much everything else just behind the vehicle shop now pretty much come full 360 we have another train transfer silo I like how this one is using multiple elevations so we have our dump station and our fill pipe 
here for our trailers and then the train tracks are up elevated a little bit we have our grape processing center we have side of the train here and then the last point of interest is going to be down here at our flour mill so let's recap the scores. We've got a full point with respect to production being built in. We have a full point for having available sell points for all of our base game crops, production and outputs, and animal outputs. We have a half a point on our farm being customizable. We have a full point on our buildings using appropriate texturing technique and round textures. And we're going to give the map a full point with respect to having interactive and player triggers clearly marked. So that is going to give the map a four and a half out of five. Overall, I think this map has done a very good job of, as I said, bringing Estancia La Pacha forward into FS22, maybe a little bit more re reimagined. Uh, given the name, one would think it would be South American, but really don't get that South American vibe with the overall landscape going on. And of course, with the base game crop calendar. So here at the bakery, we have our pallet spawn point, we have our dump station, and then around the side, we have our interactive trigger. So guys, let me know down in the comments below, what do you all think of La Pacha map? I know you all have had a chance to play this map at this point for several days as it came out right as I was literally on the road to starting our vacation and to couldn't get back to it until we came back into town which is what well, we're back so like I said let me know down in the comments below what do you think of La Pacha map and until next time happy farming <laughs>